I should describe myself. I'm a tough voodoo detective. What am I looking for? Well, if I knew that, I wouldn't need to put out a personal ad. Why did I let my brother talk me into moving here? This town needs saving, he said. Restless spirits, he said. Oh, well, I can't blame them. With all the damn tourists here, I feel pretty restless myself. This town's got all the charm of a burning outhouse. Ugh, just my luck. I better poke around for something to help me put this fire out. Whoa, that's hot. It's a mask representing Baron Samdi, a voodoo demigod. He's the lord of the underworld and one of the most powerful Loa. I like to keep him close. I find it comforting somehow. It's a mask representing Baron Samdi. He's the lord of the under... I like... I've got to find a way to put this fire out. It's a mask representing Papa Legba, a voodoo demigod. He's one of the most powerful Loa and arbiter between humanity and the spirit realm. There's a hidden switch behind the mask. My seltzer bottle. That fire's about to have a toe tag and a ticket to the big adios. That's better. Voodoo Detective speaking. How may I help you? Yes, that's my real name. No, I don't detect voodoo. I practice voodoo and use hoodoo to detect. It's right on the sign. No problem. Take care. No clients, no dough, and a mountain of bills on my desk. Nice desk, though. If you're from the fire brigade, you're a little late. Are you voodoo detective? That's my name, unless they changed it while I wasn't looking. What's this about, miss? If you don't mind... I'd like to save the introductions for later, Mr. Detective. I have a rather strange case that may be well suited to a man of your talents. That is, if you do do voodoo. You do do voodoo, don't you? You don't do voodoo, ma'am. Why don't you come in and sit down and show some respect? Now, suppose you tell me about it from the very beginning. I need your help, detective. I need you to find out who I am. Oh, come on. I, I swear this never happens. What do you mean, find out who I am? If you're looking for a shrink, that's not really the kind of soul-searching I do. I mean I've lost my memory. You may not understand, but it's rather precious to me, and I'd like it recovered. You lost your memory, huh? Did you check the couch cushions? Is this some kind of joke to you? Take it easy, lady. You haven't given me much to work with. Is there anything you do remember? What are you doing? 
Just a little examination. Oh, okay. Um, this is going to sound strange. I don't know if you'll believe me. It doesn't matter what I believe. You go on with your story. Well, the very first thing I remember was standing at a crossroads. I'm not sure where, but it felt somehow both familiar and foreign at the same time. Like the memory of a dream. There was an old man there. He spoke to me. I believe this belongs to you. I was confused. I couldn't remember ever having seen the pendant before. In fact, I couldn't remember anything. He seemed to understand. Don't worry, child. A little sleep and you'll be back to your old self again. My head started to swim and I blacked out. When I woke, I was lying in a bed I didn't recognize, in a life I didn't recognize. Around my neck was the pendant from my dream, and in my hand, your business card. I never printed any business cards. You mind if I take a look? By all means. Hmm. Well, that's not normal. So you don't have any idea who you might be? I've learned, or at least I've been told, that my name is Mary Fontoul. My husband, Victor Fontoul, is the president of Island Ventures. We live in a mansion outside of town with our butler, Benny. We've been married for 10 years, and we're very happy together. And you don't believe a word of it? I may have lost my memory, Detective, but I haven't lost my intuition. This woman I'm supposed to be, Mary Fontoul, it's not me. And what if you're wrong? Then you'll have made a bit of money, and I'll walk away a confused rich woman. Why not see a doctor? Why come to me? Believe me, I've seen all the best doctors money can buy. The popular opinion is that it's stress. Well, I'm not one to knock the other guy's merchandise, but you could have saved some time coming here first. You said the old man gave you a pendant. Do you have it with you? Yes, here. If it helps the investigation, please keep it. The investigation? Let's not get ahead of ourselves. I still need more information before I agree to take the case. Let's say I am interested. Do you remember how to use a checkbook? I can offer you a $200 advance and another $200 on completion, plus expenses. Money is not an issue. Can you help me out? Or do I need to find someone else? Well, all right, sweetheart. For that kind of cabbage, I'd voodoo investigate most anything. Consider me hired. Thank you, Detective. I don't mind telling you that comes as a relief to me. Here's the money. I have a good feeling about you. Save your feelings for book club, honey. You know, you better keep that shirt buttoned, Detective. I wouldn't want your big old heart falling out. I'll be careful, Voodoo Dollface. How can I get in touch if I need to talk with you about the case? If you need me, I'm staying at the Chic Shell Hotel. Please come see me if you make any progress. Oh, and Detective. Yes? Don't call me Voodoo Dollface. What a knockout. A dame like that could give a zombie a heart attack. Or a voodoo detective a real headache. I better mail my personal ad and then go get my book of voodoo back from Billy. I can barely see my desk under all these bills. Nice desk, though.
Just grab my coat before I go. I'm not talking to any tourists. Well, if it isn't New Ganin's newest detective, what can I do for you, VD? What do you think of all these tourists? Well, you know I really can't complain. They bring good business to the bar. Where did they all come from? Our quiet little island's become a bit of a hot spot ever since Island Ventures moved in. They set out to commoditize the island experience for package and sale. First it was Island Kitchen, then Island Trader, and now Island Coffee. Sometimes I don't even recognize this town anymore. I don't think they'll stop until this island is just one long line of sweaty tourists shuffling from one island franchise to another. But I can't complain. Like I said, business is good. What was Zawanga like before they showed up? Well, there were a lot fewer Hawaiian shirts and a heck of a lot more character. The main drag used to be a colorful collection of cozy shops and local flavor. Now it's just a tidy row of island brand imitation. They turned a rum on the rocks into a virgin pina colada. Even started tearing down old monuments. The most recent victim was a Honfo, where island cough is going up. Now, people practicing voodoo like you and your brother don't really have a place to worship. That's enough about tours. I'm working a new case. Mind if I grill you? Go right ahead, Mr. Detective. Have you seen this pendant before? Oh, vintage. Not really my style, but nice piece. Could be an heirloom. Sorry, I've never seen it before. What can you tell me about Mary Fontoul? Fontoul? I only know of Victor Fontoul. He owns Island Ventures. Thanks for the info, Rick. No problemo. I need the skinny on some of the locals. Of course, VD. What do you want to know? How was my brother Billy doing? Oh, you know Donut Hole. Still tapping his foot and typing out tunes. I'm sure he's pretty fed up with folks trying to take over his bar, but nothing could shade his shine. He's just this wonderful musical self. Right now he's in one of his trances. Why don't you see if you can bring him around? Thanks for the info, Ricky. Any chance I could borrow your mortar and pestle? The tools of my trade? Would I ask you for your gree gree and magnifying glass? Or whatever it is voodoo detectives use to voodoo detect? Well, I guess we could make a trade. What do you have in mind? I'm running dangerously low on mint leaf. I need it for all the goofy drinks those tourists guzzle down. If you can get me more mint, the mortar and pestle are all yours. <sighs> it's 
been a hell of a day, Ricky. Give me a voodoo fizz and make it kick like a mule with hay fever on Mardi Gras. You got it. On the house. Down the hatch. Ah, delicious. I've got a split. See you around, Ricky. No use trying to talk to Billy while he's in one of his piano trances. There's got to be a way to snap him out of it. That's my grandmother's book of voodoo. We call her Grammy. She was a legendary mambo. I should really ask Billy before I take it. Never know when you might need a bucket of water. Rise and shine. I guess he's still out of it. I bet I could find a use for this. That's odd. Looks like a metal gauntlet. The sort of medieval knight might wear. I should use that chair first. These things are heavy. This hurts me more than it hurts you, Billy. Still nothing. That's odd. Looks like a metal gauntlet. The sort of medieval knight might wear. Could come in handy, if you'll excuse the pun. What did the five metal fingers say to the face? Hey, something fell out of the gauntlet. It's an older Monica, like the one I used to play with Billy when we were kids. You held on to this for me? After all these years. If I want to get through to him, I need to start speaking his language. Just like old times. Hearing that harmonica always brings me back. What's new, Voodoo? You mind if I borrow Grammy's book? Help yourself. But I'm surprised you need it. Must be a real tough case. This old book comes in handy more often than you think. I've got a new case. Mind if I pick your brain? Go right ahead. Have you ever seen this pendant? Sorry, I don't go in for any jewelry foolery. Ricky knows more about that sort of thing. You could ask him for a hot tip while you sip. Have you ever heard the name Mary Fontoul? Has my baby brother got eyes for some lovely lady? It has to do with the case. Sure, Voodoo. Whatever you say. Wait, Fontoul? Yeah, Mary Fontoul. I know a Victor Fontoul. Maybe she's related to him. She's his wife. Going after a married woman, eh? Oh, I'm just messing with you. Sorry, I never met her. 
That's enough shop talk for now. What's happening, Billy? Well, shoot, where to begin? What's with the offering on the piano? Something ain't swinging right in the spirit realm. I can't lock down the beat. It's all out of tune. The rhythm's wrong. I figured a little spirits for the spirits couldn't hurt. How have you been? I'm doing all right, brother, especially since you moved here. Although I wish those Island Ventures vultures wouldn't knock such a steady beat on my door. They keep trying to get their tasteless talons into my business. Already own more than half the town. Oh, well, in every life, a little rain must fall. As long as I have occasion to tickle the old ivories, I'm satisfied. I wanted to ask you about something else. Lay it on me. See you around, Billy. Come back again soon, and don't forget that harmonica of yours. It always brings me back. Mortar and pestle. Hmm. Ricky probably uses it to make drinks. Could be useful. Give me some mint and it's all yours. rent from you. You're new in town, so I'm cutting you some slack. But if I have to call you again, I'm not going to be as friendly. Hope to hear from you soon. Thanks. End of message. This radio may be old, but the speaker's got a powerful magnet. When I listen, so do the neighbors. I bet I could get that magnet out if I could find something to jimmy this thing open with. It's a camera. A real beauty, too. I can tell you the image quality is truly remarkable. Plus, we developed the photos right here. I'll take it. Great! Thanks for shopping at Island Trader. There's nothing we won't trade for your business. It's a souvenir screwdriver. There's a tiny inscription on the side. I went to Zawanga, and all I got was screwed. <laughs> Funny and functional. I'll take it. Thanks for shopping at Island Trader, where all your trades come true.
Magnet came right out. I see a white candle when I want it painted black. Hello, and welcome to Crumbsford Capital. What can I do for you today? I'm a voodoo private investigator. I was hoping to speak with Mr. Crumbsford. Sorry, sir. Mr. Crumbsford is out at the moment. But don't worry. He should be back soon. I have no reason to give these people my money. See you. Mr. Lawden? Uh, if you've come for legal services, I'm afraid I can't take on any more clients at the moment. Actually, my name is Voodoo Detective. I'm a Voodoo private investigator. Got some questions I was hoping you could answer pro bono. Absolutely not. I have to finish preparations for an important, uh, affair this evening. Can't you see how busy I am? Oh, how perfectly inconsiderate. I ought to hold you in contempt. You're just like my wife, Kiki, and her little puppets. Well, I'm not a puppet. I'm a man! Have you ever seen this pendant before? This is a law office, not a lost and found. Now please excuse yourself before I'm forced to take legal action. Be seeing you. I certainly hope not. The ventilation shaft. Looks like it runs to the roof. I managed to get the grill off. But my screwdriver broke. Cheap island brand garbage. If I could fit in there, I'd have front row seats to the counselor's crooked cabaret. Greenhouse is locked. I'll need to find a key. Good day, sir. How can I help you? The name is Voodoo Detective. I'm a voodoo private investigator. Voodoo, you say? What, may I ask, brings you here? Actually, I'm looking for a Mr. Fontoul. Victor Fontoul. That you? Oh, no, sir. I'm Benny, his butler. This is the Fontoul residence, but I'm afraid Mr. Fontoul is in a meeting at the moment. Perhaps you could come back another time. That's all right. I don't mind waiting inside. Mr. Fontoul should be finished presently. There's a letter here addressed to Benny. 
Tear stains had blotted out some of the words. Benny, you have to stop. I don't know what he would do if he found... Besides, I can't just forget the way you treated me. I don't know what you're getting at. Hoodoo, you're scaring me. I'd like to remain friends, but you have to stop. Sincerely, I wonder if Mary wrote this. Hoodoo for butlers. A couple of chapters are bookmarked. Love spells and mind manipulation. What have you been up to, Benny, old pal? Listen, you old pit viper. I've stuck my neck out for you financing this new factory of yours. All right, all right. Calm yourself, dear boy. No need to get excited. Well, if I'm excited, it's your fault. <laughs> Quid pro quo, Victor, you slippery worm. I don't like all this cloak and dagger nonsense. Just a little professional discretion, Gordon. We don't want anyone stealing our recipes, do we? Discretion? I don't care a fig for your discretion. I care about what's being done with my money. Be it is, my friend. I'll explain it all at the shareholders' meeting. For now, please trust that things are progressing on schedule and as planned. <laughs> I don't like being left in the dark, Victor. I don't like it at all. You'd better have some answers next time we meet. <sighs> Sir, a voodoo detective is here to see you. A detective? Voodoo detective, Mr. Fontoul. I was hoping we could talk. I see. Well, why don't you join me in my office? I do apologize for the excitement out there. When in business, one must deal with all sorts of people. Especially when you require funding. What was that argument about? Well, Island Ventures subsidiary, Island Kitchen, is preparing to launch a new line of food. I'm holding the cards pretty close to my chest to avoid any leaks. Gordon doesn't like that. But surely that has nothing to do with why you've come to see me. Unless you, too, wish to inquire about the particulars of our new secret recipes? I'm here on behalf of my client, your wife. Mary? My God, I've been worried sick. Is she all right? She'd been acting like a completely different person, and then she just up and left. I've got some questions about your wife. Uh, please, go ahead. Was Mary spending time with anyone new prior to her memory loss? Not that I know of. Uh, my work requires frequent travel, and Mary always insists on joining me. Couple that with her proclivity for solitude, and she isn't left with much opportunity to make new acquaintances. At least, none that I would be unaware of. Does Mary have any close friends? Mary keeps largely to herself, uh, but she does visit with my nephew's wife on occasion. Her name is Kiki Lawton. Do you know how I can reach Mrs. Lawton? I know Kiki and Mary often enjoy brunch together at the Chic Shaw restaurant. You might try there. What do you know about Mrs. Lawton? Kiki is the wife of my nephew, Theodore, but I'm afraid I don't know her very well. If you don't mind, I've got other questions. Do you know of anyone who would want to harm Mary? Heavens no. Everyone loves Mary. She's kind and good. She never bothers anyone. A mind would have to be truly unhinged to harm a sweet, delicate flower like Mary. 
What did you know about Mary's past? I'm afraid very little. I know both of Mary's parents died when she was young, and she has no siblings. But she doesn't like to talk about her past, and I don't wish to reopen old wounds. Mary was given this pendant around the time she lost her memory. Look familiar? Why, yes. She brought it to me shortly after her memory trouble began. We never were able to find out where it came from. Do you think it has anything to do with her amnesia? I don't know yet. That's enough about your wife for now. Do you mind if I ask some personal questions? Go right ahead. You've amassed quite the fortune. Got any greedy-eyed next of kin looking for a slice of inheritance pie? No, no, nothing like that. The only family I have aside from Mary is my nephew, Theodore Lawton. He runs a law practice downtown and works as my lawyer. And if you and Mary were out of the picture, he would stand to inherit quite a lot of lettuce, right? Are you suggesting that Theodore is trying to kill my wife? I'm not suggesting anything, just exploring possibilities. Do you know of anyone who might want to do you harm? Someone who might go after your wife to get to you? In business, one has many competitors. And of course, if you're successful, there are bound to be those who look on with covetous eyes. But business is about optimizing profit, detective. And there is no profit in harming a man's wife. That's enough about you for now. Can you let me into the greenhouse? My butler, Benny, manages the grounds here. Uh, you'll have to ask him about it. Though he has become a bit more particular about whom he lets in, since his tiff with the local barman. That's all for now. Godspeed, detective. Lots of elegant leather-bound books. Just the kind you expect in a fancy office. A reader lives a thousand lives before he dies. The man who never reads lives only one. Well, if it isn't Benny the butler. Hello, detective. What can I do for you? What can you tell me about Mrs. Fontoul? Mary is a good woman. She's always been generous to me. She used to sit for hours with that kind, blank stare of hers, listening to my opera when no one else would. It was unlike her to leave the way she did. I've been so worried. I do hope she's all right. Did you notice anything strange about Mary before she lost her memory? Not that I can recall. She seemed every bit her normal, quiet self. Completely imperturbable, as though a veil of calm separated her from the troubles of the world. Did Mary start spending time with anyone new prior to her memory loss? I don't think so. She only really spent time with Mr. Fontule and her friend, Kiki Lawton. And myself, of course. The dear. Do you know of anyone who would want to harm Mary? No, I don't. Mary never hurt or offended anyone. Frankly, she didn't interact with all that many people to begin with. I've got this gold pendant here. Have you ever seen it? Sorry, no. 
If you don't mind, I have a few other questions. What can you tell me about Mr. Fontoul? Mr. Fontoul is a beneficent gentleman. I can make no complaints about the time I've spent working under his employ. But even if I could, it's not a butler's place to say such things. Do you live here? Why, yes. My quarters are adjacent to the staircase. Can you let me into the greenhouse? I'm afraid not. The Fontule greenhouse represents a spectacular botanical achievement. The variation in provenance among the flora we cultivate requires careful attention. The only way to maintain precise control over the environment is to limit the number of visitors we allow in. <laughs> That's why I'm the only one with a key. I am sorry. I got this letter here addressed to you. Where did you get that? Have you been in my room? This looks awfully bad, Benny boy. A letter from someone who doesn't appreciate your attentions. A book of hoodoo in your room. And Mary Fontoul wakes up without her memory. Care to explain? You have been in my room, Mr. Detective. I resent what you're insinuating, and I absolutely cannot abide you invading my privacy. I have nothing but respect and admiration for Mary Fontoul. She's my dear friend, and one of the few people to show interest in my opera. I will speak no more on the matter. Thanks, Benny. Well, if it isn't New Ganin's newest detective, what can I do for you, VD? I need the skinny on some of the locals. Of course, VD. What do you want to know? What do you know about the banker, Gordon Crumsford? Oh, him. But he and Victor Fontoul are always pestering poor Billy to sell the bar. Do you know anything about the lawyer on Main Street? Yeah, he does all of Island Ventures' legal laundry. If I were you, I'd keep my distance. That weasel's liable to bite. Have you ever met Kiki Lawton? Is she related to Theodore Lawton? His wife. I see. Well, if she's anything like her husband, I'd steer clear. Some kinds of dirty don't wash off with water. What's the story with Benny the butler? Oh, that old so-and-so? Yeah, I used to mix in with him. It was nice to have a little zest for a while, but the twist is he thought it was going to be something more. Things got muddled, and I had to get tough. Our relationship ended up on the rocks. He was pretty shaken up. Still, I hope he's doing all right. I found this letter in Benny's room. Lots of tears on it. Is it from you? Tears? Oh, dear, that poor boy. Listen, VD, can you do me a favor? Can you give this to him? I don't like how we left things. I didn't mean to hurt him. What's the story with Benny the butler? Did you give him my letter? Not yet. Thanks for the info, Ricky. I'm working a new case. Mind if I grill you? Go right ahead, Mr. Detective. Do you know anything about Victor Fontoul? Sure, I know him. He and Gordon Crumsford, the banker, are always pestering poor Billy to sell the bar. Thank goodness he won't. I could never work for one of those tacky Island Ventures abominations. Thanks for the info, Rick. 
No problem. I've got a split. See you around, Ricky. Well, if it isn't Benny the butler. Hello, detective. What can I do for you? I spoke with Ricky. He asked me to give you this letter. I... Oh, Ricky. Thank you, detective. This means a lot to me. If there's anything I can do to repay the favor, just let me know. Can you let me into the greenhouse? Well, normally I'd say no, but you've been so kind to me. Here, take this. It's the key to the greenhouse. Thanks, Benny. Thanks for the key, Benny. You can never have too many lemons. The bottom shelf has aloe, orchid, fiddle leaf fig, and mint. Looks like I'll be getting that mortar and pestle after all. If it isn't New Ganin's newest... Any chance I could borrow your mortar and pestle? Like I said, I'll trade you for some mint leaf. Got any? I've got your mint right here. Wow, you found some. Thanks, VD. I was about to run out. You're a lifesaver. You have yourself a trade. The mortar and pestle are yours. I need the skinny on some of the locals. Of course, VD. What do you want to know? What's the story with Benny the butler? Benny and I had a chance to speak. Things are better now. Thanks, VD. Thanks for the info, Ricky. I've got a split. See you around, Ricky. What's new, Voodoo? I've got a new case. Mind if I pick your brain? Go right ahead. What do you know about Victor Fontoul? I don't know much about him personally, but he and Gordon Crunsford own a company called Island Ventures. They keep trying to take over the bar. I always tell them the same thing. I'm not selling. Can you tell me anything about Gordon Crumsford? The banker? <laughs> I'm not a fan. Born under a bad sign, if you ask me. A dollar sign. The money-grubbing glutton. He's one of those Island Ventures fat cats who keep trying to take over my bar. They want to pull the piano right out from under me. I always tell them the same thing. I'm not selling. What do you think of that lawyer on Main Street? I don't know about him, but I know his wife, Kiki. She swills cheap spill at the Sheik's Shore restaurant. That's enough shop talk for now. See you around, Billy. 
Come back again soon. And don't forget that harmonica of yours. It always brings me back. Black candle should work. I think this qualifies as lodestone. Here's my lemon zest. I think that's it. The owner honer mixture is ready to use. Looks like the spell worked. I can feel the pendant pulling me somewhere. Hmm, the pendant is pointing at this old mausoleum. The plaque says, the Moon Family. Hmm, it's locked, but there are fresh footprints leading inside. Someone must have been here recently. Hmm, let's see, six foot, 42 long, but still breathing. What is it that you want? The name's Voodoo Detective. I'm a voodoo private investigator. My name is Eartha. I am the mistress of these hallowed grounds. Can you let me into the Lamoon Mausoleum? <laughs> I am a grave digger, not a crypt keeper. I don't have a key. Well, who's got it then? Try Gordon Crumsford. He owns the cemetery. I merely fill it with corpses. I saw footprints leading into the Lamu Mausoleum. Have you seen anyone going in or out of there? Perhaps I did. Perhaps I didn't. My mind's a little misty. I don't do bribes. Then you're scratching at the wrong grave, Buster. Would a couple of greenbacks help dig up your memory? <laughs> I don't need your mortal coin. All right, Eartha. What's it gonna take? Very little interests me beyond tending to the dearly departed, but I have had my eye on one of those new island brand shovels. Bring one to me, and it may resurrect my memories. Good chat. I'll be seeing you, Eartha. Folks always do. Sooner or later. What is it that you want? Good chat. I'll be seeing you, Eartha. Folks always do. Sooner or later. Darla ran the old hotel until she rang the checkout bell. There's a bouquet of Centennial Dragonheart plumerias. They're beautiful. But I'm no grave robber. Welcome to Island Trader, an authorized dealer of Island brand products. I was told you guys sell a very special shovel here. You must be referring to the upcoming release of our new line of island shovels. That sounds about right. I'd like one. <laughs> you and me both. 
They're not out yet. What do I have to do to get one early? You'd have to get approval from my boss, Mr. Fontoul. Good luck with that, though. He's pretty strict about new product releases. I'm just gonna look around. Go right ahead, sir. Hello again, Detective. Any news about Mary? The island trader shopkeep told me I needed your approval to buy the new island brand shovel. Ah, oh, yes. I'm very excited about that one. However, as a rule, I prefer to confine our new product releases to a specific date. Is there a good reason you need the shovel right now? It has to do with your wife's investigation. It does? Well, then why didn't you say so? If you think a new shovel could help bring my Mary back to me, then of course you may have one. I'll have the shopman set one aside for you. Thanks, Vic. If you don't mind me asking, how do you anticipate a new shovel will help you with my wife's investigation? It's kind of a long story. You remember that pendant your wife woke up with? Yes, I recall her showing it to me, and we never did figure out where it came from. Well, I was able to trace it back to a mausoleum at the cemetery. Does the name Lamoon ring any bells? <gasps> Good lord. The Lamoons owned a local gumbo restaurant that we acquired in exchange for a substantial stake in Island Kitchen. Gordon and I worked closely with Francois and Esmeralda to integrate their recipes into our menu. It was an exciting but difficult time. How so? Exciting because the Lamoon recipes drove a new wave of popularity for Island Kitchen. Difficult because Gordon had become infatuated with Francois's wife, Esmeralda. It made for rather awkward business meetings. So what happened then? Well, about a year after the acquisition, Esmeralda and her daughter, Genevieve, washed up on the beach having drowned. Such an appalling tragedy. Hmm, so what? Mother and daughter forgot how to doggy paddle? Well, yes. The official police report deemed it a swimming accident. Why do you think someone would want Mary to have a pendant from the Lamoon family? That, detective, is the one question I truly have no answer for. What in the world has the tragic Lamoon family tale to do with my Mary? If you figure that out, please let me know. What happened to Francois? As you know, Esmeralda and Genevieve died. As far as I'm aware, Francois went missing around the same time. He wasn't present for the official inquest into his family's demise. So you're saying he could still be out there? It's possible he's still alive, yes. But if he was with his family when they drowned, it's more likely his body was simply never recovered. You don't sound like you buy the official story. Let's hear your version. I don't like to speculate without proof. Humor me. I won't quote you. Well, despite my personal difficulties working with Gordon, I hate to cast aspersions on the fellow out of hand. It's just that he always carried a torch for Esmeralda Lamoon. And as I said, it made for rather awkward business meetings. Things only seem to grow worse over time. In my view, it made him unstable. What exactly are you saying here, Mr. Fontoul? You think Gordon killed Esmeralda and Genevieve? Oh, no. I, uh... That seems extreme. And yet here we are. I asked you what you think really happened, and you tell me how crazy your business partner can get. What's a detective to think? Perhaps I shouldn't have said anything. Saying it out loud, it seems, uh, far-fetched. Uh, forget I mentioned it. 
That's enough about the Lamoon family for now. That's all for now. Godspeed, Detective. Welcome to Island Trader. Please let me know if I can get anything for you. I believe you have a shovel for me. Ah, you must be Mr. Detective. I've got your shovel right here. I'll take it. A trade's a trade, and our trade is your happiness. What is it that you want? Here you go, Eartha. If anyone asks, you didn't get it from me. Oh, this is excellent, my darling. I'll be the talk of the tombs. <laughs> it has the logo and everything. You just wanted the sticker? Yes. Right. Well... Maybe now you can tell me who was snooping around the Lamoon mausoleum. It was that lousy little lawyer. Something about that guy gives me the creeps. You mean Lawton? Yes, yeah, spooky fellow. I saw footprints leading into the Lamoon mausoleum. It was that lousy little lawyer. Something about that guy gives You mean Lawton? Yeah. Good chat. Folks all... I told you, no further qu- God, you don't listen. You're just- I've got a surprise witness, Counselor. Earth of the Gravedigger saw you visit the Lamoon Mausoleum. That is a bold accusation. I think you should leave. So, we're going to do this the hard way, huh? I don't like you. Well, I bet with a little leverage, I could pry my way into your heart. Be seeing you. I certainly hope not. You don't smell like a man of business. Nice place you got here, Mac. Though I prefer something a little more modest, like the Chrysler building. Who are you, and what do you want? The name's Voodoo Detective. I'm a Voodoo private investigator. Ah, uh, yes. I know who you are. You're Donut Hole Billy's brother. If you care for him, you should advise him to sell me his pathetic excuse for a business. I'm looking into what happened to Mary Fontoul. What do you mean? What's happened to her? Someone's wiped her memory. Dame's got the recall of a senile goldfish swimming in a martini. So, Victor hired a private investigator to figure out why his wife finds him so forgettable. <laughs> I could have sniffed that out for him. <laughs> Actually, Mary's the one who hired me. I was hoping you could answer some questions. I see. Very well, Detective. I'll hear your questions, but make it quick. I've got some questions about the Fontools. What can you tell me about Mary Fontoul? I don't know her very well. Our brief interactions are entirely a consequence of my business dealings with her dreadful husband. She always seems like a nice enough woman, which raises the question. What is she doing married to that cretin? 
Do you know why anyone would want to hurt Mary? Mary? No. However, it isn't terribly difficult to invent reasons to harm her husband. Perhaps someone's gone after the goose to get the gander. Of course, now we're building pyramids of surmise on a foundation of ignorance. What do you have against Victor Fontoul? He seems like a decent man. He's an abysmal human being. A cold brain divorced from any heart. You've known him only briefly. I've been working with the man for years. Give it time. You may see things my way. I've got other questions. I heard it through the grapevine that you own the cemetery. Indeed I do. Death and taxes. I can't collect the latter, but I can certainly profit from the former. Can you let me into a specific mausoleum? I'm afraid not. Only the families of the interred are allowed keys to their mausoleums. It's entirely up to them what they do with their dead. Does the name Lamoon mean anything to you? I... Yes. I knew the Lamoons. Then make like a clumsy barista and spill the beans. They were a family of three. Father Francois, the daughter Genevieve, and the mother, Esmeralda Lamoon. May she rest in peace. They owned a local gumbo restaurant that was acquired by Island Ventures. Thus, I knew them through my business dealings with Victor. What do you know about Genevieve Lamoon? She was a child. What more is there to say? Just another seed that never had the opportunity to sprout. What do you know about Francois Lamoon? Personally, I found Francois to be a noisome bore, a crude man with a primitive mind. How he managed to win a treasure as pure and wonderful as Esmeralda, I'll never comprehend. What about Esmeralda, Lamoon? My dear Esmeralda, a bouquet of a woman. Her smile was serene, her heart was kind, her temperament mild, and her cooking... <laughs> her cooking was an intimation of divinity. I won't lie, Detective. I loved Esmeralda. Always from afar, but I loved her. You make it sound like the Lamoons are all dead. Esmeralda and Genevieve are dead, yes. According to the papers, they drowned. But we don't know what happened to Francois. According to the papers, I take it you have your own theory? Well, you already know Victor acquired the Lamoon family restaurant to help launch Island Kitchen, yes? What you might not be aware of is how the Lamoons were compensated. Overcompensated, in fact. Victor made no effort to conceal that he was grossly displeased with the situation. Over time, the man's mind seemed to fray. He became distant and cold in the presence of the Lamoon family. That is, until they were no longer around. So you think Victor killed the Lamoons? What, to get back control of the company? Well, yes, control, but it was also about money. With the Lamoons out of the picture, Victor became a much wealthier man. You may well ask if money was motive enough for murder. I would argue that men have killed for less. And if you knew Victor as I know him, well, you'd have a much shorter list of suspects. I asked Victor about the Lamoons, too. He had an interesting take on things. Oh, I'm sure he did. Victor seems to think you killed the Lamoon family in a fit of jealousy for Esmeralda. Sound about right? 
I should destroy that man and staunch the endless flow of fetid vitriol that spills from his disgusting mouth. Why in the world would I kill the woman I love? There's no substance to these wicked indictments, and if you believe them, you're an even bigger fool than you look. I've got other questions. That's enough for now. I may come back later. Hello and welcome. See you. Earth has said Theodore Lawton, the lawyer on Main Street, has been inside the Lamoon Mausoleum. I've got to find some leverage to get that weasel to squeal. Good day, sir. What can I do for you? I'll take a meal for one and drinks for two. Great. Find yourself a table and I'll be right with you. Ah, the swimming pool. No better way to spend a day at the beach. Can I get you anything? What's on the menu? Well, let's see. We have our macadamia nut crusted mahi mahi bites. There's the steamed miso thai snapper. Our special today is poisson cru, made using deadly fugo fish. For drinks, we have the mighty mango mojito, our marooned martini, and our most popular drink, the voodoo wipeout punch. How about some grub? Yes, sir. What would you like? I'll take the special. Excellent choice. Bon appetit. Where'd you get that food? Why, from our kitchen, of course. And you just had it in your coat? They don't call it a dinner jacket for nothing. That hit the spot. How about something to sand down the edges? Certainly. What will it be? I'll have the voodoo punch. Very good choice. Bon appetit. Where'd you get that drink? Why, from our bar, of course. And you were just carrying it in your jacket? They don't call it a barcode for nothing. How about something to sand down the edges? Certainly. What will it be? I'll have a mojito. Very good. Bon appetit. Bottoms up. How about... Certainly. I'll have a martini. Very good. Bon appetit. Bottoms up. That might have been one too many. Blah. I'm too old for this. Two drinks is my limit. How about some... Gr yes, sir. I'll have the excellent bon appetit. Smell. Oh. That hit the. How about. Yes, sir. I'll have the excellent bon appetit. 
Smells delicious. Mm. That hit. How about some? Yes, sir. I take it. How about some? Certainly. On. Um, actually, I. Please let me know. It's the carcass of the Fugo fish I ordered. Looks like the poison gland's still in there. Don't mind if I do. Hello there, handsome. Looking for someone? Not anymore. <laughs> oh, it's like that, is it? You wouldn't happen to know anyone named Kiki Lawton, would you? As a matter of fact, I do. Better hold on to your hat, because she's the devilish darling you're gabbing with, Mr... Detective. Voodoo detective. Pleased to meet you, Mrs. Lawton. The pleasure's all mine, detective. And you can call me Kiki. Dining alone? Hmm. Why do you ask? Looking for a date? Maybe I am. <laughs> well, I'm sorry to disappoint. I'm expecting company. And my brand of entertainment is best suited for an audience of one. Are you staying at the hotel? I certainly am. I find it a welcome respite. Domestic life can be so drab. Wouldn't you agree? I wouldn't know. Count your blessings. Does the name Lamoon mean anything to you? Lamoon? No, I've never heard the name. Why, who is that? Found out your husband was padding around the Lamoon mausoleum. Left his footprints all over my case. Care to comment? And here I am, thinking he can't leave the office because of work. Did you ask him about it? Well, I've tried, but he keeps giving me the old 86. I'd act surprised, but I know how single-minded and selfish he can be. He has the gall to accuse me of neglecting him while he goes gallivanting about town, telling me he's at the office. Apparently, I need to be a corpse for him to pay me a visit. The liar. Frankly, I think my workaholic husband has been cheating. You don't say. You want information on the Lemoons, yes? If Theodore was at their mausoleum, they may have been clients of his. And it just so happens I have access to all of his files. Let me guess. I scratch your back, you scratch mine. Sound about right? Bring me evidence of my husband's late night cheating, and I'll give you all the access you want to his files. I'm staying in the honeymoon suite. Here's my room key, in case there's anything you'd like to um, report. Now, if you wouldn't mind, darling, I'm expecting company. Good day, sir. Checking in? I'm looking for a woman staying here named Mary Von Toole. One moment. Uh, yes. We do have a Mary Von Toole staying with us. She checked in the other day. A shorter woman with brown hair and brown eyes. Uh, came here alone, paid cash. She's staying in room 203. I believe she's in there now. 
Uh, but you need a room key to get upstairs. The Chic Shell Hotel takes our guest privacy very seriously. I've got a room key right here. Ah, excellent. Mrs. Fontoul's room is on the second floor. You can use the elevator across the lobby. See you. Good day, sir. Going up? Yep. Great. I just need to see your room key before I can take you upstairs. Here's that room key you demanded. Fantastic. Step right in. Santa Claus, open up. The North Pole's up another floor. But I guess you can come in anyhow. That's a beautiful desk. Um... Thank you? I'd been hoping you'd show up. What have you got for me? How are you doing? Oh, just dandy. Isn't it every girl's dream to hole up in a hotel room because her mind's been erased? You really ought to try it sometime. Hang in there, Mary. I've been looking into that pendant. Does the name Lamoon ring any bells? None that I can hear. Why? The trail goes cold at the Lamoon family mausoleum. Well, what does that mean? It means I get to use the word exhum in a sentence. I got some info on the Lamoons. Their names were Francois, Esmeralda, and Genevieve. Papa Bear, Mama Bear, and Baby Bear, respectively. They owned a small gumbo restaurant a few years back that was acquired by Island Ventures. From what I gather, about a year after the Lamoon sold their gumbo joint, the mother and daughter turned up dead. Drowned in some sort of accident. The father up and vanished. And that pendant led you to the Lamoon family mausoleum. So where does that leave us? I'm not sure yet, but I'll keep digging, so to speak. Your husband's business partner seems to think Victor might have had a hand in the Lamoon family tragedy. Since Victor had buyer's remorse after the acquisition of the Lamoon restaurant, felt he'd given them too large a stake in Island Kitchen. Victor wanted to regain control of his company and didn't mind getting his hands dirty. Gordon doesn't seem to think very highly of your husband. He's not my husband. Do you think there's any merit to Crumsford's story? The investigation's still open, Voodoo Dollface. I have more leads to follow up on before I'm ready to draw any conclusions. Victor implicated Gordon Crumsford in the Lamoon family tragedy. Says Gordon was gaga for Esmeralda, but she wasn't interested in what he was selling. He lost his temper, and they lost their lives. At least, according to Victor. He and Gordon don't seem to get along too well. You've met Crumsford. Does he strike you as a violent man? The investigation's still open, Voodoo Dollface. I have more leads to follow up on before I'm ready to draw any conclusions. That's all I've got on the Lamoons for now. Get this. Gordon Crumsford owns the cemetery. You think that's relevant to my case? Or are we just gossiping now? I can't say for sure. I thought it was interesting. I think I've got a lead. Oh, good. What did you find out? 
Looks like Theo Lawton, the local ambulance chaser, has been poking around the Lamoon mausoleum. Do you think he has something to do with my case? I don't know, but he's awfully tight-lipped for a man with nothing to hide. I just need to find a way to get this lawbird to squawk. Please, let me know if I can help. How'd you like to get some fresh air? I get the feeling you're not inviting me for an evening stroll. I could use your help getting information from Lawton, but it might be dangerous. I'm in. You haven't even heard what the job is. I want to help. This is my case, after all. So, what are we going to do? Kill a chicken on his grandmother's grave? Slip a mojo in his coffee? Ooh, curse a crocodile and take its teeth. We're gonna take pictures of him cheating on his wife. Voodoo pictures? It's not that kind of job, sweetheart. You know, so far, you haven't really lived up to your name. Oh, well. Any excuse to escape this claustrophobic hotel room? I can't stand being confined to close quarters. What do you need? I need you to climb into a ventilation shaft. My, what a glamorous profession you have. So when are we doing this? Meet me on the roof of Lawton's law office at sundown. And you might want to wear pants. Keep the fashion tips to yourself, trench coat. I'll be there. This is kind of exciting. I've never been on a stakeout. How would you know if you had? I suppose you're right. I could have been a spy before all this. I wonder how many sunsets have been stolen from me. Don't worry, kid. We'll get whoever's responsible. Right. Well, I've got the camera. I'm gonna see what I can see. I think we ought to wait a little. Grab my legs, Voodoo. Wait, hold on. Kids got more backbone than an anaconda. I've got you this time, husband. Full house. Oh dear, you do make a compelling case. Uh, hey, what's that behind you? Where? I don't see anything. I thought I saw your mother. Uh, sorry, sweetie, it must have been my imagination. You're not getting out of this that easily. Now, show me your hand. Royal flush. Ugh, you've got to be kidding me. Better luck next time, sweetheart. Well, how'd it go? He's a cheater, all right. Here, I think I got what we need. You did good, Voodoo Dollface. Did you expect any less? I'll go get these developed at Island Trader. Let me know how this all turns out. I'm headed back to the hotel. This was fun. Welcome to Island Trader. Local goods. I need these developed. No problem. One moment. Here you go. Thanks for choosing Island Trader, where the trade winds always blow your way. Detective, we met at the pool. Oh, hello, Detective. Have you learned anything new about my husband? Yeah, I got some news. 
Well, come in and tell me about it. I know you've been entertaining other men. What have you got for me, detective? I've got the goods, honey. Black and white, 8x10, full gloss freedom fodder. The stuff divorce dreams are made of. Well, don't keep me waiting, darling. Let's see them. Aha! I knew it, that cheating swine. I'll have him on a platter for this. Thank you, detective. I'll make sure my husband's office is unlocked. You can rifle through any files you wish. Now, if you don't mind, I have a performance to finish. Receipt for a Crumsford Capital Bank account. You got an ice box I can keep my lettuce in? We sure do! Crumbsford Capital is here to service all your finance management needs. Also, any account you open comes with a complimentary safe deposit box. You convinced me. I'd like to open a bank account. That's wonderful news. To open an account, you'll need an executive approval form from Mr. Crumsford. Where did you say I can get an executive approval form? You'll have to get one from our president, Gordon Crumsford. Actually, maybe another time. See you. What is it now? I'm a very... Would you be willing to give me an executive approval form? I'd like to open a bank account. Crumsford Capital is a prestigious institution that caters only to a small pool of elite clients. The only way we're able to maintain a rigorous quality of service is by keeping that pool small. So I'm sorry, Detective, but I'm afraid the answer is no. As long as my eyes remain open to watch over these gilded halls, the approval forms will remain safely nestled in the drawers of my filing cabinet. <clears throat> You seem to eat a lot of chocolate, Mr. Crumpsford. Yes, I'm afraid I'm rather addicted to it. I can never say no to a box of Chortle's chocolate truffles, especially when I'm upset. You don't say. <clears throat> Damn, I've run out. That's enough for now. Welcome to Island Train. Please let me know. Do you carry Chortle's chocolate truffles? We sure do, and you're in luck. I've got our last box right here behind the counter. Ring them up for me, will you? You got it. 
A little fugo goes a short way towards a long nap. What is it now? Hey, Crumsford. I brought you something. What's that you got there? Is that a box of turtles chocolate truffles? A token of my appreciation for being so cooperative. Well, that's awfully kind of you, Detective. Thank you. Delicious. <laughs> you know, I'm feeling rather... Rather... Looks like he's out cold. Well, looky here. An executive approval form. Hello, and... I'm ready to open a bank. Here's that form you asked. Fantastic. From now on, you can sleep soundly knowing that your money is safe here at Crumbs for Capital. You also now have access to your own personal safe deposit box. All I need is a short six-digit passcode for the combination lock. I recommend something memorable. Perhaps an important date, like an anniversary or a birthday. Great! You're all set. Just let me know any time you'd like to visit your safe deposit box. Here's a receipt confirming the creation of your new account. You can find your safe deposit box number there, too. We're so happy you decided to bank with Crumbsford Capital. Just let me know if I can help in any way. I'd like to visit my safe deposit box. Fantastic! Just follow me to the vault. It's safe deposit box number 203. Let's just see if that key I got from Lawton works. Lila Lamoon, May 25th, 1799 to March 18th, 1852. Esmeralda Lamoon, September 21st, 1887 to July 8th, 1924. The lid of the coffin is askew. So the pendant belonged to a dead woman. But what do the Lamoons have to do with Mary? There's more missing from this case than just my client's memory. If I want to get into the Lamoons, what numbers could have... Genevieve Lamoon. September 9th, 1909 to July 8th, 1924. This must be Esmeralda and Francois's daughter. Just a kid. Lester Lamoon. February 7th, 1812 to October 12th, 1880. If I want to get into the Lamoon safe deposit, what numbers could have been significant to Esmeralda? Esmeralda Lamoon, September 21st, 1887 
to July 8, 1924. So the pendant belonged to a dead woman, but what of the Lam is more missing from this? Loretta Lamoon, August 2nd, 1763 to October 1st, 1821. Lamont Lamoon, July 11th, 1855 to July 23rd, 1875. Lila Lamoon, May 25th, 1799 to March 18th, 1852. Can't use that here. Genevieve Lamoon, September 9th, 1909 to July 8th, 1924. This must be Esmeralda, just a kid. moment, sir. I'll let you right in. It's safe deposit box number 203. That did it. Genevieve's birthday. There's a journal. Let's see what we have here. The Journal of Francois Le Moon. June 28, 1924. Esmeralda and I went to Island Kitchen today to share a cup of Le Moon Gambo. Delicious as always, but something is different. I shall go to the factory to investigate. June 29, 1924. Mon Dieu! They have defiled our recipe! It has been contaminated! I cannot allow this to continue. I must speak with Victor. July 2nd, 1924. It's just a crude drawing of a muscular chef with a gun. <sighs> July 5th, 1924. Victor told me today that the recipe had been altered without his permission. He told me he would summon the board of directors. <laughs> it looks like we will have to engage with the sweaty Monsieur Cromsford and the company lawyer, Monsieur Lotran. I am running out of patience. July 6th, 1924. Victor has invited me and my wife to his yacht to meet with Messieurs Cramsford and Lotan. I fully expect my demands to be met and the original recipe restored. Finally, we will get to the bottom of this. They got to the bottom all right. So the last people to see the Lamoons alive were Fontoul, Lawton, and Crumsford. Those gold brickers have some explaining to do. Enough reading. The 
This desk is a little messy, but still, it's a good desk. Legal documents and books on law. I'd rather be stranded on a desert island than read those. Benny, I need to see Victor. He's headed to the Island Ventures shareholders meeting aboard his yacht. He won't be back for several days. Thanks, Benny. Oh, Detective, your landlady called to say there's a letter for you at your office. Also, <clears throat> she said your rent is overdue. Ah, <laughs> that's just an inside joke. This must be the letter Benny mentioned. Hmm, no return address. Thank goodness. I was about to call an ambulance. Uh, make it a hearse. I feel like death warmed over. What happened? And what are you doing here, voodoo dollface? I got tired of waiting around and came back to check on the case. I found you lying here on the floor with a note in your hand. What's it say? Drop the case, or your brother will have to change his name to Bullet Hole Billy. Someone's being a little too slick for their own good. Well, they just threatened the wrong voodoo detective. I'd better go check on Billy. Ricky, have you seen Billy? Oh, hey, VD. Hmm. I haven't seen him around since he left with Gordon Cromsford. But that was a while ago now. Billy... They took Billy. They took my brother. Oh, God. Listen, this is getting out of hand. I think you should drop the case. You can keep the money. I don't want your family getting hurt on my account. I'm still on the clock, sugar. You paid me to find out who you are, and that's just what I plan to do. We riled him up good, like a bear clawing a beehive. And this bear's not stopping until he gets some honey. Um, okay. They're gonna wish they never involved my family. What are you going to do now? Those island ventures crooks are all headed to Victor's yacht. I bet anything my brother's there with them. If I'm going to get to the bottom of this, I'll need to find a way aboard that boat. I can get us onto the yacht. I am Victor's wife, after all. Us. This isn't a joyride, voodoo dollface. I'm coming with you. Lady, it's too dangerous and I don't have time to play babysitter. These lowlifes have already shown us they aren't afraid to hurt people. I'm not your sugar, your sweetheart, or your voodoo dollface. I'm your employer, and I'm not gonna stay cooped up in some stuffy hotel room. Now, you can either get ready and meet me downstairs, or wait here and stew in your little office while I go alone. All right, all right. You want to risk your neck? That's fine. I won't stop you. We can go get killed together. That's more like it. Come meet me when you're ready to go. Don't dawdle. The kid's got more moxie than a crocodile in a handbag factory. I better not make her wait.
looks like the gang's all here. Is that... Billy? Welcome, my friends, and thank you for joining us. It is my great privilege to unveil the latest development from the Island Kitchen brand. I call it Island Soul Food. We've dramatically improved upon the secret ingredient that originally put Island Kitchen on the map. This time, it's a little more powerful and a lot more delicious. In fact, it's practically addictive. Soon, we'll be able to flip the switch on our new top-secret factory on Ventures Island, where profound innovations will make our dreams a reality. There will be no one who can resist our enchanting food. But don't take my word for it. Try it yourselves. I and my fellow board members are off to make final preparations. But I want you all to relax and enjoy yourselves as we embark together on a new island venture. When I heard shareholders meeting, this is not what I had in mind. Here I am worrying about my brother's health and we find him toasting with the enemy. I'm gonna go find out what these creeps are up to. If you need my help, just scream. You know how to scream, don't you, detective? You just open your mouth and blow. Yeah, what can I do for you? Interesting party, huh? Uh, frankly, it's a little creepy. Ah, I can't complain about the entertainment, though. Such a nice voice. May I have some of your simple syrup? Uh, sure. Knock yourself out. So, you're sweet on the singer, huh? What? No. I don't... I mean, he's fine. Handsome. Beautiful voice. Dreamy, really. Okay, fine. I like Kenneth. What's so great about Kenneth? <sighs> I hear the songs he sings about other women. Such sweet things, he says, and with such a sweet voice, and I think... How good it would be if just one of those songs was about Barb Tender. Why don't you go talk to him? Oh, oh, no, I, 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 I wouldn't want to bother him. Besides, I can't leave the bar. Someone might steal my aged rum. Enough about love. See you around. There's something fishy about this food, and it ain't the surf. Yes? You've got quite a set of pipes. Why, thank you. It's nice to run into an admirer of the arts at one of these private events. Hopefully my next show will be in front of a real audience. What do you think of the bartender? Who, Bob? She muddles a mean julep, but I don't know her very well. How'd you like to get to know her? I'm not really interested. Keep them swooning, crooner. Consider this apple cord. Billy? Door's locked. I can hear voices, but I can't make out what they're saying. Surf it. Real cute.
I can think of a few plans I'd like to throw this into. Get yourself topside! Don't you know there's a fire in the engine room? This ought to keep her busy. I can hear Victor's voice down below. If I could lower myself in that lifeboat, I might be able to get a better view. But the crane doesn't seem to have any power. You never know when you'll need a pencil and something to write on. Hmm, it's some sort of fuse box. The fuse for the crane outside is missing. Autopilot. All this navigational equipment's got me lost. Yes? Could I get your autograph? Well, I don't usually, but why not? Who shall I make it out to? Actually, just your name would be great. Okay, here you go. Thanks. I'm a big fan. Name of Passion's Fire. Check. Lover's sweetness freely given. Close enough. I think that's done it. I just need to cut the apple in half. Takes two to tango. One half for each lover. Hmm, the knife broke. Cheap island brand garbage. Yes? What's this? I thought you could use a snack. I'm not hungry, but thanks anyway. Are you sure? Yes, quite. It's going to get all brown if you wait too long. Look, I didn't ask for a snack, and I'm not fond of apples anyway. Well, you should be. Apples are supposed to be very good for your vocal cords. Really? Yeah, it's an old trick Darling Daniel Doobie used to use. Darling Daniel Doobie? He's my favorite singer. Hand it over. Thanks. Keep him swooning, crooner. Yeah, what can I do for you? This is for you. I'm not hungry. Really? It's from Kenneth. I can just tell him you didn't want it. No, 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 no. Wait, I'll take it. Thank you. Looks like Cupid's arrow found its mark. Welcome to the bathroom, sir. Let me know if I can be of any assistance. What is it exactly that you're doing here? 
I'm here to ensure all of your bathroom needs are met. I want you to be as comfortable as possible during this difficult time. Also, after you've washed your hands, I'll come dry them for you. Why wouldn't I just dry my own hands? Oh, you needn't bother yourself with such trivial matters. That's what I'm here for. Listen, pal. I've been drying my own hands since I was old enough to get them wet. I'm not about to let someone else start now. Mm, gotta go. Then you've come to the right place. Come to Papa. Excuse me, sir. It's bathroom policy that the stall door remains closed while in use. Jeez, this place is fancy. It's a beautiful toilet. Hmm, the handle came off. Solid gold. Looks good enough to eat. Well, down the hatch. That's not going to be much fun later on. I don't need to wash. My God. If I can find a replacement fuse for the light bulb crane, I'll be good as gold. If I can find a replacement fuse... Um, excuse me. It's against policy to allow guests to take away bathroom property. You've got the wrong guy, pal. It's quite clear you've taken the handle from one of our toilets. I didn't take anything. Maybe so, but I'm going to have to search you. First, you want to dry my hands. Now you want to pat me down. Well, go ahead, pal. Maybe afterwards you could buy me a drink. Well, I seem to have been mistaken. I'm terribly sorry. Please accept my humble apology. No harm done, fella. I'm sure you've learned your lesson. Oh, I have, sir. Delicious. 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 That might have been one too many. Blah. I've got to learn to handle my booze. Don't try this at home, folks. It actually fits pretty well. It's all powered up now. Down I go. What is all this? What does any of it have to do with our new product? I'm glad you asked, Gordon. You see, the secret ingredient to island soul food can only be produced at our new factory on Ventures Island. But in order for production to begin, we need one last component. That component is Baron Samdi, Lord of the Dead. What? Do you mean to tell me your brilliant new business strategy is to pray? Pray? My goodness, no. We're merely going to extract Baron Samdi's spirit from a willing host. With it, we'll be able to draw souls away from the underworld and into the soul food generator at the heart of our factory. You mean... 
That's right, gentlemen. Human souls. That's what makes our soul food so addictive. <laughs> <laughs> He's lost his mambo-loving mind. Victor, you can't be serious. I bet everything on this. You'll ruin us all. Easy, Gordon. You're starting to sound a little crazy. Now, Theodore, if you wouldn't mind, please step this way. Me? Y you want me to get in that thing? There's a good boy. In you go. Uh, are, are you certain this is, uh... Wait a minute. Something fishy's going on around here. Good heavens! And that's that. Victor, what have you done to Theodore? <sighs> hmm? Uh, oh dear, I'm afraid he didn't survive the ritual. Oh, you've gone too far this time, Fontoul. Not only have you crossed a demigod, but this time you've killed a board member. I've stood idly by, watching you nurture your own madness like a spot of mold growing in your heart. But no more! I'm so sorry to hear you say that, Gordon. I really am. But if you're not in, then you're out. You... And really... We can't have just anyone knowing about this. Wouldn't you agree, detective? Uh-oh. How good of you to drop in. Did you miss me? Looks like we have ourselves a bit of a family reunion here, haven't we? Billy, what are you doing? There's something wrong with him. Look at his eyes. You know, darling, you really have become quite a pill. A little medication would do you some good, lunatic. <laughs> Just charming, isn't she? Why don't you take it from here, Billy? I believe you had a song for us. One that ends with a real bang. And here I am, without my earplugs. No! Mary! Oh, voodoo doll face. Why'd you have to go and do something brave like that? I told you not to call me voodoo doll face. Billy, I know you're still in there. Take a look around. It's the Zowangan family Robinson. 
Someone's really set up shop here. This looks like a hot tub, but it's empty. Hey, hands off my stuff! What are you doing in my house? The name's Voodoo Detective. I'm a voodoo private investigator. I'm just trying to get my bearings. I washed up here not too long ago. Making yourself at home on someone else's island, eh? You are a bad person. Do you mind if I ask you some questions? But I do mind. Can you not see I am busy? Do away, shoo! Hey, hands off my stuff! Hey, hands off... Hey, hands... Sacre bleu! Where did you get that necklace? You've seen this before? But of course! It belonged to my wife! Your last name wouldn't happen to be Lamoon, would it? Ah, uh, I see my renown is not diminished. <laughs> yes, I am the Francois Lemoon. No autograph, s'il vous plaît. Now you will tell me where you acquired my wife's locket. A uh, locket? Just push the button at the top, you see? It contains a picture of our beautiful daughter, Genevieve. This is your daughter. Yes. She is lovely, is she not? Well, this locket was given to me by my client, Mary Fontoul. Fontoul! That name is a foul curse! One must spit it out like a piece of rotten beef! Yeah, the thing is, that's Mary Fontoul's picture in the locket. What are you talking about? I've got some bad news for you. Your daughter and Victor were man and wife. Oh, gross! He is so old! Wait, what do you mean, where? She's dead. Mon Dieu! She takes after her father. <laughs> uh, I, I need... A moment. Hey, hands off my stuff. Nice digs. You build this place. Ah, she is magnificent, is she not? When I first arrived at Ile Francois. It was nothing more than a moldering wreck. But I took this house here, and I made it into a silk purse. I call it Chateau du François. Ah, it would be my chef d'oeuvre, if only I had been able to finish the hot tub. I found your journal. It says Victor invited you and your wife to his yacht, that you had concerns over changes made to your family recipe. The entry stop after that. What happened? Oh, it makes me ill to think of it. Victor indeed invited us to his yacht. But when we arrived, we found he had taken our daughter Genevieve hostage. He threatened to kill her if we did not immediately sign over our rights to Island Kitchen. Of course, we did as he asked. We signed the papers to save our child. But before the ink could dry, Victor pulled out a gun and started firing. While he was busy shooting my wife, I jumped overboard. So Victor killed your wife, hexed your daughter, and left you for dead. Oh, what a despicable man. So you jumped off Victor's yacht and washed up here. How did you die? An unfortunate tragedy. I was trying to expand the plumbing for my house, uh, putting in that hot tub. I tried to tap the lake at the top of the mountain, but I had a little dynamite accident. 
<laughs> Made quite a mess up there. What's it like being dead? It is exactly like being alive, except you don't have to pay taxes. I don't suppose you know a way off this island. I don't know. Maybe. You mean you might know a way off? <sighs> I wish I could help you off this island. Perhaps then you could take care of that connard, Fontul. But alas, I have unfinished business. What do you mean? My aqueduct must be completed. I cannot live here until my hot tub works. I put so much effort into that thing. So, if I get your hot tub working, you'll get me off this island? Absolutely. I swear on my wife's grave. How involved were Theodore and Gordon in the kidnapping of your daughter? Those two craven rats stood by and watched Victor destroy my family. In my opinion, they are equally complicit. I hope Crumsford eats a bullet and Lawton melts entirely. I'll be back later. Hey, hands off my stuff! You want your hot tub filled, right? Well... Well, I can't help you without some of these items. <sighs> Very well, then. Take what you need. And once I'm finished, you can help me off this island, right? Absolutely! Says world's best castaway. Looks like it's made of pyrite. For a dead man, he sure has a healthy ego. Never know when you might need a sturdy cup. The cupboard is chock full of kooka bunch of cereal. I wonder if this ship was run by a horde of children. Yum. Those don't go together. Those don't go together. That won't help here. I can't use that here. That won't help here. I can't use that here. Time to make my award-winning soup. There's a mechanical starter for the stove. No need for matches. There we are, nice and hot. Oh man, that stinks. Vapor from the melted pyrite condensed on the hood. There's a stinky sulfuric residue. I think I'll scoop some into my pockets. This probably counts as brimstone. A little charcoal ought to heat things up. Those don't go together. Those don't go together. I think it's scared of me. Nothing says I'm not going to hurt you like a handful of kooka bunches. Ah, oh, look. It left me a little present. I'm tickled. This rock is caked in guano. You never know when you'll need bad crap. It 
It's a blasting plunger used to detonate explosives remotely. Looks like Skinny over here never got the chance to use it. Doubt he'll notice if it goes missing. It says Zawanga Isle tax law. I say 2,000 pages of mind-numbing boredom. But I guess I'll pick it up anyway. This must be Francois' skeleton. My, but what fine teeth he has. Guano gives the dish a kick. Whatever you say, Grammy. I think that's it. Just like Grammy used to make. That won't help here. I better step back. Just like Grammy used to make, it's time for Francois to hold up his end of the bargain. All right, Napoleon blown apart. Now that your tub is bubbling, how about you help me off this hunk of rock? I would if only I could. Sulevi. What? I thought once your business was finished, you'd be ready to leave this place. That you could get me off this island. I didn't say that. Oh, come on. Don't get mad at me. I am but the humble ghost of a renowned master chef. What am I supposed to do, dummy? You're the voodoo detective. Maybe you should ask the spirits for help. Well, that might not be such a bad idea. Now go away. I am relaxing. I can rest when I'm dead. Or at least I could if Victor hadn't corked the underworld. like an Hassan. A dried gourd surrounded by loose netting used for voodoo ceremonies. Usually the netting has beads in it, but they're missing. There's a small clay pot. Maybe I can replace the missing rattles with these teeth. They have a nice sound to them, actually. This is a Humfo, a voodoo place of worship. The central pillar represents the connection between this world and the realm of spirits. Think of it like a spiritual telephone. Each loa has a veve, a phone number. When you draw a veve at the base of the pillar, it's like dialing that number. Your veve drawn a perfect sign. Hmm, more than anyone, I need to reach Papa Legba. He'll know what to do. I've never asked much of the lower, but I could really use some help right now. 
Your Vebe draw on a perfect sign. The Asan shakes to keep the time. A call that sounds in holy ears. We dance until our guest appears. Well, that didn't do anything. Oh boy. I was wrong. Oh, where am I? It's a statue of Papa Legba, but it looks wrong. Like something's missing. It's a statue of Victor. He's holding a box he seems pleased with. There's an inscription on the box. Pain visits the flesh, but makes its home in the mind. Let's just see what's inside this puppy. Oh, 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 ouch! It felt like the skin was melting right off my bones. But my hand is fine. I guess the pain was all in my mind. That's no place to lay down the law. I can't use that here. It's a statue of Victor. He's clutching an old man's cane with a gleeful look in his eye. There's an inscription here. A mirthful belt will quickly melt what sadness has in store. The key to hold a chest of gold is nice, but I'm worth more. Sounds like I need to find a way to make old Stoneface laugh. Let's see if this guy's ticklish. It's a statue of Victor holding a straw hat. He's got a look on his face like a naughty child. There's something written here. The clock conducts a marching tune. First left, then right. It starts at noon. Beneath the inscription is a series of musical notes. Let's see if I can play this. A strange melody. It's a statue of me. Not too shabby. I can move the arms. Voodoo doll face. That monster's going to pay for what he did to you. It's Gordon. I'm surprised he's not made of gold. I guess I did something right. I'll take that. The cane fits. This ought to cover up that bald spot.
That's no place to lay down the law. That won't help here. Those don't go together. I'm not wasting this. It's the other way around. It says Zawanga Isle Tax Law, Chapter 1. This chapter summarizes the significant tax legislation impacting the Zawanga Isle Department of Revenue. It was approved during the 1918 regular session of Zawanga Isle Legislature. Research and fiscal analysis divisions are not intended. I'm sorry. I can't read anymore. This is mind-numbing. It's a statue of Victor. There's an in pain. Pain makes think God. There's a stone pipe in the box. I'm taking it. I hate to reinforce a bad habit, but. It's no Michelangelo, but at least it's wearing clothes, eh? Uh... Indeed. I am Papa Legba. Uh... Uh... Well, I'm bored. Let's go. Hey, wait up! Your Papa Legba. That's right. I believe you have some questions for me. I'm marooned on a desert island. I have to get off somehow. Maybe think about that the next time you decide to leap from the back of a moving ship. My client's been murdered. Ah, yes. Genevieve. Nice lady. Not such a nice way to go. But you're no detective. Nothing lasts forever. You know Genevieve? Well, she's part of the reason you and I are talking. It was you. You gave her that pendant. Well done, detective. But why? Pull out one tread in the cosmic tapestry, and the patterns underlying the whole universe can shift. In this case, Genevieve Lamoon was that tread. Victor had erased her mind, wiped away her past. She was nothing more than a submissive trial. I woke her from her stupor and gave her a gentle nudge in your direction. And now she's dead because of me. Self-pity won't bring her back, but if you want to set things right, I have a business proposition for you. Victor's captured Baron Samdi's spirit. He's using it to harvest human souls to season his gumbo. Victor Von too. Yes. Let's come back to him. Victor kidnapped my brother. Yes, but the important thing is he's still alive. You mentioned a business proposition? Victor's actions have far-reaching ramifications. The land of Genin has been plunged into chaos. The dead are rising from the earth, and the living are addicted to unholy poison. We stand at a crossroads, and all paths but one lead to oblivion. Fontoul's crossed more people than the Catholic Church. 
Find a factory on Ventures Island, stop Victor, and restore Baron Samdi to his throne. How will I find Victor's factory? Take my side. With it, you can traverse hidden passages across reality. You can get off this island and back on the case. So how about it, detective? All right. I guess I could pencil you in. Very well. We have a compact. Now, before I go, there's one thing I should mention about my sign. The crossroads of the universe only meet in locations with a strong connection to the spirit realm. Your best bet is a place of worship, like a hunfo. I think I can manage that. Once you've acquired Baron Samdi's spirit, use my sign to restore him to his throne. Good luck, detective. We're all counting on you. I think I'll put on a shirt before I leave. Here goes nothing. This must be Ventures Island. You can tell by the giant factory stinking up the joint. Smells like soul food. The factory must be through there. Hmm, I can still smell the factory, but I can't tell where the scent's coming from. I'm going to head back before I get lost. I think I need to use the sign on myself. Here goes nothing. It's a bottle of black ink. Don't mind if I do. I'm not giving these people another dime. Oh, geez, Ricky looks like hell. Gordon Crumsford, large as life, dead as a doornail. Detective? Ah, it's you. What brings you to this wretched place of rot? Come to watch this tattered soul fall to pieces? Tempting, but no. How'd you end up here? No interest in the underworld? I don't really know. I remember Victor shot me, some nauseating swine. It was a remarkable experience, really. 
I was expecting it to hurt, but all I felt was a warm, tired sensation spreading over me. I just sort of fell asleep. And then I was here, in the cold halls of my ancestors. I suppose I'm dead. Thank heavens those errant souls victors unleashed haven't taken over my corpse. There's something that's been bugging me, Crumsford. Why work with the man who murdered the woman you loved? You know, it's funny how something so obvious now could have such inconspicuous origins. Changes so small as to be unnoticeable at first, gradually transformed Victor. And the man of enterprise I first met, he became a force of reckless violence who stole both my love and my life. And I wish I could do it all over, but no man is rich enough to buy back his past. And I guess it's only fitting that I should be trapped in this pitiful place. Why not leave? I've tried, but every time I do, I, I feel my mind beginning to slip away like a balloon from the hand of a child. <laughs> All right, so you hit the skids. Are you going to sit here and sulk, or do you want to set things right? What do you mean, exactly? I need your nose to guide me to Victor's factory. But how? I'm just a disembodied spirit. I'm all talk now. Let me worry about that. If you agree to help, I'll find a way to get you out of here. You do that for me? After all I've done? You get one last shot, Crumsford. You blow this, and you can rot here for the rest of time. That's... Probably more than my behavior merits. Very well. I will do whatever I can to help with your investigation. Perhaps it's not too late to do the right thing. So, where do we begin? Let me get back to you on that. I may need to leaf through my grandmother's notes. I'll be here, melding with oblivion. Inside a red clay pot. This should do. A sign of soul in passion's coil. This belonged to Esmeralda. Ugh, I knew I recognized that pendant. Actually, it's a locket. Oh, Esmeralda. You'll always be my soulmate, no matter what you say. The symbol of the body's toil. I think this ink from the bank should suffice. Ah, the smell of a freshly inked mortgage agreement. The body of my life's work lay in lending. Almost makes me feel whole again. A symbol of thought. Hmm. Gordon was always thinking about money. Maybe a couple coins would work. A good banker always has his mind on his money and his money on his mind. I've got all my ingredients now. You ready to make good on your word? Yes, detective. I'm at your service. All right, let me give this a try. Looks like it worked.
Here goes nothing. All right, Crumsford. It's your time to shine. I'm here, Detective. How can I be of service? I need to find my way to Victor's soul food factory. <laughs> this way, Detective. <laughs> we should head west. Amigo, you did good for once. What now, Detective? Now, I'm gonna shut this place down for good. It's some sort of cup. I assume it's used to hold liquid. Presumably to drink. It could come in handy. Not much in here except the washcloth. Might as well take it. There's a gum wrapper stuck on the bottom. Could be useful. There's a double-A battery in the drawer. Beautiful desk. Mm. But I don't have time for that right now. Actually, there's a hidden button here. This desk is even better than I imagined. I don't know the combination, and it would take the strength of a hundred men to break it open with my bare hands. But I bet this is where Victor keeps the key to the factory. Smells like industrial strength coffee. There's a warning on the machine that says, hot surface, do not touch. It's too hot to touch with my bare hands. One steaming cup of joe coming right up. Here goes nothing. Victor's got them hooked on his sordid slum gullion.
hope Eartha isn't in there. Can't make up your mind, huh? This doesn't look good. Remind me to be cremated. Looks like Gordon's ancestors are throwing a little family reunion. Gordon's final deposit. I need to find a way deeper into this factory if I'm gonna do any real damage. Hmm, she's holding a flower. What you got there, buddy? Mm. For me? Mm. You shouldn't have. Here goes nothing. The vessel with the petals holds the brew that is through. Ooh. Ooh. Whoa. I feel... I feel as strong as a hundred men. Open sesame. Oh, I think that coffee is finally wearing off. Let's see here. Precious stones, gold coins, macaroni art, and the key to the factory floor. I'll just take that. Uh-uh-uh. I don't think so. I'll thank you to keep your filthy detective mitts off my possessions. Someone ought to put a bell on you. Sorry, old chap. To the victor go the spoils. Frankly, I don't know how you survived your little spill from the yacht, but bravo! If you like that, you're gonna love how I escaped your burning factory. Do you take pleasure from being a thorn in my side? I'd rather be a nail in your coffin. I think that's enough chit-chat for now. Do say hello to Mary for me. One of the... If I connect the cathode to the anode with a flammable conductor, I should get... fire. But I'm through with you. I can't use that here. That won't help here. Time for a dirt snap, my childish friend. Those don't go together. I'm not wasting this. It's the other way around. Would you like some butter, detective? I hate to waste good rum, but desperate times. Sometimes you have to fight fire with fire bombs. Hey, Victor! What is it, detective? Can't you see we're busy trying to kill you? This one's on the house. <sighs> You've just lit your own funeral pyre. This factory is practically made of asbestos. Billy, 
You stand outside and make sure he doesn't escape. I have business to attend to. Damn. I better find a way out of here. I've got to find a way out of this room or I'm toast. So this is where I left my giant diamond. My diamond broke. Cheap island brand garbage. I've got to find a way out of this room or I'm toast. <clears throat> Better clear out before I ruin my necktie. I don't need anything else from there. I'm kind of high up, but I guess you can't make an omelet without breaking a few legs. This conveyor leads into the next room. The console says, quality control crane. Exhaust turbines don't like soul food. Lesson learned. What the devil is going on here? You! I thought I had you incinerated. Why aren't you a pile of ash? And what have you done to my beautiful machine, you little gremlin? Uh-oh. Looks like someone put a potato on your tailpipe. Oh, you're a dead man, detective. This time, I'm going to take care of you myself. The Grizzly Reapers almost ready to begin mowing. Hmm. The sign doesn't seem to work here. Papa Legba said my best bet is to try using it near a Humfo. Any last words, detective? Do your worst, Fontoul. Very well. Goodbye, Mr. Detective. Oh. Uh. Uh. What the devil is going on here? You and uh oh, Looks uh -oh. this conveyor runs back into the barrel room. I think it's for rejects and voodoo detectives. Hey, you get away from there, detective. Getting tired of looking for you now. Victor's got Baron Somdi's spirit fixed in the machine. It's acting as a beacon to the souls. I've got to get it out of there, but I can't while the machine is running. You cannot hide forever. It's a utility box. There's a halligan in there. Where has that meddling rat scurried off to? This panel controls the soul food generator production speed.
Hmm, not enough power. Naha! Found you, detective! Now, be a good lad, and embrace your doom! goes down quite a ways. Come out, come out, wherever you are! There's a note here. Do not increase power to the soul beacon or soul juicer. We don't want anyone upstairs damaging the machine by running it at full speed, however tempting that may be. It's signed by the factory's lead engineer. This panel controls the power distribution for the entire factory. I think that's it. The soul food generator is fully powered. This panel controls the soul food generator production speed. Detective! What have you done? It's over, Fontoul. I'm shutting you down. The dead are rising from the earth, and I kind of like them there. The only thing rising is our profits. The dead are an incredible draw for tourists. Not to mention they'll probably work for pennies on the dollar. No, it's not over, Detective. Business is booming. Should be able to use Papa Legba's sign to return this to Baron Samdi. Why, Detective? Why must you tread so callously over my dreams? Look around you, Victor. What part of you is so broken you can't see the damage you're doing? Don't be naive, Detective. You think there's something so sacred about the spirits, about God, about life and death? The only thing sacred is the happiness we can extract from the brief flame of our existence. We are the custodians of life's meaning. And I find my meaning making money and delicious fast food. You've put all of existence in jeopardy. Where exactly do you think this is going to end? I'll admit, I don't know. But surely you agree the destination's not important, so long as you're enjoying the journey. I've tried to reason with you, Fontoul. I really have. But I can tell there's no getting through. It's time to teach you a lesson. It is you. For whom the school bell tolls. Private Dick Kick. Ooh! Gentleman's Cower. Private Eye. Victor's current weaknesses are earn a soul. And private dick kick. Earn a soul. Victor's weaknesses have changed. Reload. Private eye. Victor's current weaknesses are Grammy's flaming hot sauce. And apple of my eye. Field of honor. If I don't start blocking those bullets, I'm liable to spring a leak. 
apple of my eye. Victor's weaknesses have changed. I think I love you, detective. Private eye. Victor's current weaknesses are nine tenths of the lower and earn a soul. Why, detective? I never noticed your beautiful eyes. Nine tenths of the lower. <sighs> Victor's weaknesses have changed. Hostile takeover. <laughs> Private eye. Victor's current weaknesses are Grammy's flaming hot sauce and apple of my eye. Soul food salad. <clears throat> apple of my eye. <clears throat> Victor's weaknesses have changed. Oh, kiss me, detective. Private dick kick. Why, detective? I never noticed your beautiful eyes. Grammy's flaming hot sauce. Gentleman's cower. Seamus Shield. Backhanded compliment. It's so refreshing spending time with you, detective. It reminds me how much worse life could be. Nine tenths of the lower. Hostile takeover. <coughs> and so ends the tale of Voodoo Detective. I've tried its time. It is you. Private Eye. Victor's current weaknesses are earn a soul and apple of my eye. Backhanded compliment. It's so brave of you to not care what anyone thinks of your personal hygiene. Apple of my eye. Victor's weaknesses have changed. I think I... Private eye. Victor's current weaknesses are... Nine tenths of the low and... Grammy's flaming... Oh, kid. Grammy's flaming hot sauce. Victor's weaknesses have changed. Hostile takeover! Private eye. Victor's current weaknesses are private dick and nine tenths of soul food salad. <laughs> Private dick kick. Victor's weaknesses of <laughs> gentleman's cut. Private eye. Victor's apple of my and earn a soul. Apple of my eye. 
Nice truck. Reload. Same as shield. Field of honor. Earn a soul. Victor's weaknesses have hostile. Private eye. Victor's current weaknesses are Grammy's flame and private dick. Soul food. <laughs> Grammys. Victor's weaknesses have changed. Reload. Seamus Shield. Field of Honor. Private Eye. Victor's current weakness is Apple of My and Earn a Soul. Backhanded compliment. You're a great fighter, detective. No. For someone so weak and stupid. Earn a Soul. It didn't have to end like this, but I guess that's what makes you the bad guy. You can't turn your back on progress, detective. Not while I'm holding the gun. Between your gun and the Lord of Death, my back is right where I want it. Oh, God. You got that right. You get away from me! I don't have any chains. Head. How did I get back here? <laughs> Breaking news Island Kitchen shut down over reports of food contamination. President and principal shareholders gone missing. Gone missing, huh? That's one way to put it. Hello again, detective. Papa Legba. You did good, kid. So everything worked out, huh? Yes. Victor is out of commission. And balance has been restored. I think I remember catching a bullet. Lost a little time there. Mind filling in the blanks? After you were shot... Baron Samdi spared your life. I think he's taken quite a shine to you. That reminds me, he wanted me to give you this. What is it? It's a token of his appreciation. Think of it as a get out of Guinean free card. Good for one soul, as I understand it. Could come in handy if you're ever in a pinch again. What happened to Billy? Don't worry. Your brother's back to his old self. Once Victor died, his grasp on your brother's mind was released. Oh, thank the Loa. I think you ought to consider thanking yourself in this instance. Do you know what happened to Mary? Don't you remember? She was shot aboard Victor's yacht. Right. But don't feel too bad. Life and death, 
They're just two sides of the same coin. Well, I'm glad we can shut the book on this one. Thanks for your help, old-timer. My pleasure, voodoo detective. I may have more work for you in the future, but for now, I bid you farewell. Bye-bye. One more case closed. Too bad saving the universe doesn't come with a cash prize. And too bad I couldn't save Mary. Hmm. I feel like I may be forgetting something. Eh, probably not. I'm out of here. Billy, you're all right. You know me, the donut hole always lands jelly side up. Why don't I buy you a drink and tell you all about it? Make it two, and I'll forget you tried to shoot me. Deal. Glad to have you back, Billy. <laughs>